Thank you for joining me on this first video of our four-part series, which Tesla is for a family. We're going to start with the Model 3. And as always, if you find this video entertaining or informative, please think about hitting the like button and maybe think about subscribing. Let's call the intro. Today, as I said before, before we start the intro, we will be talking about the Model 3 and is it right for family. But before we get into that, we're going to have to discuss the different variants, tire options, and what all you can get for the Model 3. And then we will discuss pricing, and then I will decide in the later videos if it's a right for family. But we'll be discussing that towards the end. The Model 3 comes with the standard range plus, the long range, and the performance. There is a standard range which has a range of 220 miles, but that is an off-menu item, so I will not be discussing it. It is pretty similar with the standard range plus, but there is a lot of features that it does lose. So I will only be talking about the standard range plus, the long range, and the performance. The standard range plus gets a rated 250 miles, the long range gets 322, and the performance also gets 322, but if you opt for the performance package, which we will discuss later, it drops down to 299 miles worth of range. The standard range plus goes zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds and has a top speed of 140 miles per hour. It has 12 way power and front heated seats with the optional rear seat now an optional upgrade in the Tesla app and can be purchased for 300 US dollars or 400 Canadian. It comes with immersive sound for your stereo choice with a 30 day trial of premium connectivity which includes the satellite maps, the live traffic visualizations, the internet in the car, streaming music and media, video streaming, karaoke, and the internet browser. This model, with it being one of the cheaper options, it will not come with floor mats. And I know, to me, if you buy a car, it should come with floor mats, but that is just how it is. There are plenty of aftermarket options out there. Now, we'll leave a link to a few of the recommendations if you are looking at either Center Range or Center Range Plus. The long range top speed now goes to 145, and the zero to 60 is in 4.5 seconds. I believe it's 4.4, and if I am wrong, I will be putting it on the screen here. But either way, that's still pretty fast. It still includes the 12 way power front seats, but now not only are the front seats heated, but now you don't have to opt in for that extra uh, $300, the rear seats are automatically heated. It's a nice option. It also comes with premium audio instead of just the immersive sound, which is 14 speakers, a subwoofer, two amps, with the immersive sound also together. And instead of just getting 30 days of the satellite maps with the traffic visualizations, the internet browser, and the streaming music and video, along with the karaoke, you now get a full year instead, which includes floor mats and LED fog lamps. So now you don't have to worry about aftermarket floor mats. They're already in there, and you should, because we will be talking about prices later on, because this does jump up in price quite a bit. Now for the performance. Top speed is the same with 145, and it, but the 0 to 60 is now 3.6, my apologies, 3.2 seconds. That's pretty fast. I've never been in a car that goes fa fast. I wouldn't know how to react to it. It's the same as the long range. You get the full year of premium connectivity with the LED fog lamps and floor mats. The only difference between the two is now you get a faster 0 to 60. But if you want the performance package, which is at no extra cost, now your top speed is 162. Your 0 to 60 does not change. It's still 3.2 seconds. But it comes with the performance 20 inch performance wheels, performance brakes, the carbon fiber spoiler, the lowered suspension, the alloy pedals, and track mode. So if you decide not to get the performance package, like I said, it's no extra cost. You'll still be with the basic as the long range. The only difference is some people refer to this as the stealth performance. But you can opt in for the performance package at no extra cost. Totally up to you. Tire options and paint are the same on most variants, but the tire choices are a little different. For the standard range plus and long range, and I'm going to go ahead and assume the standard range as well, 
The 18 arrow inch wheels are standard. They come with 18 inch arrow cap, which can be removed to show off some stylish rims. But if you want that 5% efficiency increase, I would leave the arrow caps on. That's totally user choice. You can opt for the 19 inch sport wheels for the cost you an extra $1,500. Now the performance model can only get a different tire size is if you get the performance package. If not, you're stuck with the 18 inch unless you look at something aftermarket. All paint options are the same. As of right now, white is standard, it is free, but if you want the solid black, the midnight silver metallic or the deep blue metallic, they will cost you an extra thousand dollars. And if you want the red multicoat, which is beautiful, I've seen a few in person, the red is just captivating. It will cost you an extra two thousand dollars. And from what I've heard, Tesla's paint quality isn't the best. So is it really worth spending an extra thousand or two thousand dollars? That might be your up to you. If not, some people recommend a PPF or getting a car wrap as well. Totally up to you. All black interior is standard on, across all models, but if you want models, if you want the black and white option, it will cost you an extra thousand dollars. A lot of people prefer the black and white. They say it does stain a little easy, but it's very easy to clean but it's totally your choice. I do know that if you switch from the black to black and white, the wood trim on the dash, which I will post a picture above, it now switches to a white trim finish, which I do believe is very stunning. But do you want to spend an extra thousand dollars? That's your choice. All cars come standard with autopilot, except for the standard range. It will not have it, but the standard range plus long range performance will have autopilot. It enables your car to steer, accelerate, brake automatically for other vehicles and pedestrians within its lane. Full self-driving is a secondary option. As of right now, over the years, it has went up, and it used to be around $5,000, but now it is currently, as this video is uploaded, it, depending on when you watch it, it could be more. As of right now, it is $7,000. And every time Tesla unlocks a new feature, they raise the price by about $1,000. There's a lot of talk with this newest feature that was just previously added in the recent update, it will be going up to most likely $8,000. But who knows? That is just hearsay. With the extra $7,000 that you plan on spending for full self-driving, that locks in its price and gives you all these features. And when the feature is completed, will allow the car to fully drive itself without intervention, which means you could read a book, take a nap, do whatever, and the car will drive itself. But as of right now, that is not ready. But if you want to pay the extra 7000 you will not have to pay any extra as the price increases. As of right now, that 7000 will get you to navigate on autopilot, which means it will drive for you and change lanes with auto lane change on the highways and get you on and off the highway from ramp to off ramp. It will allow you to also auto park both parallel and perpendicular spaces. You can summon your parked car and it will come find you in a parking lot. Now a lot of people say it's very conservative, but it is still most likely a fun party trick and it still does work. But you must be conscious and pay attention the entire time because you do not want to take a chance of the car missing something and it costing you something out of pocket. It also has traffic light and stop sign control and now with its newest update it will assist and stops at traffic controlled intersections. So with the newest update, depending on what hardware you have, you can see the traffic visualizations on the, your in-car screen. So you can see the stop signs and the stop lights. With this newest update, and they are training the neural, neural link, I think, neural net, it will stop and go for you. You still have to notify it if it, can, if it needs to stop or continue, depending on, because it's still learning. But this is just its next step into becoming a fully self-driving car. Safety. Safety is very important for a person who either drives a car with their family in it or if it's maybe for a teenager in the future driving it. I don't want to put my child, my son or daughter in a car that I know is not going to be safe. Tesla was able to achieve a five-star safety rating in all five categories by the NHTSA. Now that's a safe car. They are not the only ones to have done this. But for their very first 
mass market sedan to date to achieve a five star safety rating, that's a very safe car. You can even limit the speed so you don't have to worry about whoever's driving your car being it maybe your spouse if you want to mess with them or maybe one of your children driving the car as they're old enough to drive, you don't want them doing something crazy. Plus, with the battery being very low at the center, it has a very low center of gravity. It's not going to be easy to turn this car over. So it is going to be a very safe car for you and your loved ones. I'll be putting links in the description about how it rides and handles. From what I've seen and heard, it is a very fun car. It has a very sporty feel to it, but it is very low to the ground, and that's the reason why. I will be posting a link about another video that getting multiple car seats in the back, it's very cramped. This is a sporty car. I drive a Honda Civic and they are very similar in size to a point and it is a little cramped in the back seat. There is plenty of room, it's just when you start putting car seats in there, it does get cramped. So I will be leaving a link up above and in the description below if you're going to be someone that's buying this car and you're going to be trying to put car seats in there, it might be a little cramped. But everyone has different uh, options, you have different car seats, and some people might only have one little one, or it could just be you and your spouse. Who knows? That'll be up to you to decide. Let's start talking about price. The standard range plus starting price, this is without you adding autopilot or different, if you want to change tires out or the paint, is $41,990. For the long range, you're going to bump that up an extra seven to forty-eight thousand nine hundred and ninety, nine hundred and ninety dollars. Sorry, and then for the full performance, fifty-six thousand nine hundred and ninety dollars. Now that is a lot of money, and like I said, we're talking about it without auto, not autopilot. We're talking about without full self-driving or any type of tire change or paint color. That's not even taxes and fees. So this is a very expensive car. There is, like I said, there is the standard range, which is much cheaper, but you're going to lose a lot of those features. And is it really worth dropping those features and losing range, or would you rather spend the extra money? I know if I could own one of these, it'd probably be the long range. I don't need to be going super fast in the performance, but I also don't want the bare minimum. I would like to upgrade. So is this a good family car? Who knows? I'll be leaving links to a couple of review videos that I think would give a better breakdown on how it rides and feels. But if you want to know is it the right car for you, in my opinion, you're going to have to wait for the fourth video in the series. Let's not forget, the next video we'll be discussing the Model Y, which has everyone talking about. Everyone loved the Model 3, but the Model Y pretty much has everything the Model 3 should have had. So, please stay tuned for the next video, and I will see you in our electric future.